In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can display and analyze Revit rooms using our Power BI Tracer Visual. The data that I'm going to be leveraging to render these rooms is going to be exported data that is produced using the Tracer exporting add-in available with the Tracer product. So if I go back into Power BI, we can see that I have a recent data source available that is hooking into an ODBC data source. This is representing the database that's been exported out of Revit. So I'm going to go ahead and click into that. And the first thing I want to do is pull in a table of information representing room objects. And so as I scroll through, you can see that we have a pretty wide ranging list of element types. In this case, I'm going to be mostly concerned with the room elements. Um, and this is going to provide me with an itemized list of room records along with their parameters, uh, conveniently organized in a single view. So I'm going to go ahead and load that in. And what Power BI is going to do is it's going to connect into my SQLite uh, database file and it's going to pull in that particular view that then gives me access to all the fields. Um, and if I want to go to my data view here um, and understand this, you can see that we have, again, itemized records. Um, we have the name of the element along with the category. Um, we have an element location, which is going to allow us to render the room boundaries. And as I scroll over to the side, you can see that we have various numeric properties, including area. Um, we're also getting um, some other properties that are stored in the model, such as lighting loads and, and so on, unbounded heights. And we're also getting some room text information, including things like the level and the, the room name and number. All of those fields will become important as we start to render this with Tracer. So Tracer is a custom Power BI visual that will sit under your visualizations tab. And what I need to do is import the custom visual file that comes with the Tracer install. So if I find the ellipsis where it says import a custom visual, I can expand that and choose to import from a file. And it's, Power BI is going to give me a, some information here about importing custom visuals. I can go ahead and click import anyway. And I'm going to navigate to my documents section. And you'll see that we have proving ground and then tracer, which then gives us access to the tracer visual PBI viz file. You go ahead and click open. And it'll say the custom import was successful. I hit OK. And we now have a custom visual. And now what makes the tracer visual unique is that we're able to render information directly out of the fields inside of a data source such as this. Many other uh, mapping visuals like the ones that come with Power BI and some of the other custom visuals um, that you can find online uh, re rely on the user to attach to some kind of map that then is correlated with um, some of the data fields. Here we're rendering the data fields uh, directly using some, some uh, standard protocols. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the tracer visual and it's going to create an instance of this visual on my report canvas. Um, I'm going to expand the size a little bit so we can see um, all the information a little bit more clearly. And what I want to do now is start to populate the fields of this visual so I can start to render some information. You can see that we have a number of important inputs here, including um, categorical information. This is going to be things like the room name or department or some other classification information. Um, there's some uh, color fields that we might want to drop in uh, to you know, create some consistent color schemes if we so choose. We can organize the data by what we're calling level. Um, so this becomes an organizer that would allow us, for example, to render the different rooms um, based on the level that they exist. And so we kind of create an array, an array of diagrammatic floor plans. Uh, we have geometry, which is perhaps the most important field here. We need to populate it with some location information um, that will render polygons and points. Um, summarize geometry, uh, which is a, um, also important if we want to create certain types of interactions between this visual and other visuals that rely on the same information. And of course, tool tips, which allows us to you know, uh, append uh, certain data uh, to, to the object as well um, and have it display in the tool tip. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to render uh, the polygons of the rooms uh, right out of the gate. So when I look at my room elements table, 
um, I need to find what's called the element location. The element location will have stored within it a uh, string of data that I can then render um, inside of this visual um, as, a, as a set of polygons. So I'm going to go ahead and drag element location into geometry. And what we're going to see right away is that all rooms are going to be displayed in this. It's basically taking the entirety of the list uh, that we have as a data source, um, this list here, it's, uh, basically going through and rendering and drawing each one of those rooms. Um, but we know that inside of Revit that these rooms exist on different levels. And so we might want to segment this data even further um, and have each of the rooms rendered by level. So what I have here is this ability to choose the level field and have it um, parse the data a little bit differently. And um, there's two parameters here. One's called level and one's called level colon one. Um, the one with the one extension is giving me access to the, the level name, whereas this is giving me access to the level ID, um, which is the Revit element ID. Um, in this case, I'm gonna just simply use the name. Um, so I'm gonna drag and drop level colon one into the level field, and that's going to parse the data and segment it out into the different levels that exist on. So now we have the entry level as the top, the middle level as the, the middle, um, and then the rooms at the, on the top floor um, there at the bottom. Um, next thing I want to do is then um, color um, and categorize these levels. So these are just vector drawings. There's no um, interact, interactive aspect to this. But what I want to do is maybe um, code all of these levels by name. So I have a name field in my room's um, uh, data source that I can use. And I'm going to populate that into the category field input here. And what that's going to do is it's going to color code um, automatically using uh, the current Power BI theme, um, these rooms. Um, and so if I go in here and I start clicking around, you can see that it's um, activating one um, of these, uh, you know, it's allowing me to select and highlight an individual set of rooms as such. Um, you'll also note that after all of these fields are satisfied that I have, you know, some ability to navigate this view. So these are kind of small, but if I wanted to say pan around, I can left click uh, inside of these fields and pan them around. You'll notice that these are all in you know, panning in tandem, right? Because it's kind of assuming that as I pan in one view, maybe I want to pan and um, the other views to the, the sort of associated area. So they're kind of linked. If I use the scroll wheel, um, I can also zoom in to say this wing of the building. Um, and I'm now able to see the, the rooms um, in a kind of more zoomed in mode. And of course, if I click this uh, zoom extents, it's going to return us to a default state. So what I can do now is start to really, you know, perhaps stylize um, this, this um, visual a little bit further and also adjust some of the controls. So what I'm going to do with my visual selected is go over to the formatting tab under visualization, and I can start to adjust some of the components here. Um, one, uh, if I start to scroll through, the first tab here that's unique to the visual is called geometry format. Out of By default, it's using uh, GeoJSON as the geometry format. So it's rendering GeoJSON data out of all of these fields uh, dynamically uh, from the data source. Um, there are a number of other formats here that the visual does support if you have other data sources that would like to leverage this visual. Um, the map UI is also important. So in this case, you can lock zooming. So if you don't want, if you want to create a dashboard where the users aren't able to zoom in on the visual, you can of course lock that. And there's also what uh, what we call link level zooming. Um, that allows us to do this type of activity where you know we're zooming in on one level and it zooms in on the adjacent levels. But if I didn't want that, I wanted to turn that off. I could I could do so, and then I can just zoom in on one level um, or another, and those are now operating uh, independently of each other. Um, I tend to often like to leave this at the default um, um, as I zoom, especially initially uh, before I have uh, you know, a completed uh, visual, just to kind of keep everything in, in check. We also have um, a couple of things. So data colors, this is where you can override the color scheme and assign specific colors to the different objects if you so chose. 
Um, data labels are extremely useful, especially if you would like to display um, the information of the category. So when I activate those, you'll see that it's activated a label that is now displaying the categorical information for each of these room objects. And it's um, showing me a bit of text and, and the text has some background. I can format this even further and say, well, maybe I want the background to be turned off. So it's simply uh, just text inside of there. And then I can also override things like the font color um, uh, uh, you know, if I wanted to, you know, continue styling this, of course. Um, <clears throat> so we've now kind of started to set out this this visual, um, and now the question becomes: how to, how does this visual interact with other aspects of the uh, Power BI interface? Um, so what I might do here is start to do some things such as creating a slicer, um, and I'm going to use the data about the room name as my filtering. Um, so I'm going to take my name field and insert it into the slicer. And now as I click through on these objects, um, the slicer is now going to um, filter my information from these um, Power BI visuals so I can start to see um, the different rooms that pertain to these objects. And it's going to automatically do that. What I can also start to do is create a visual um, that that interacts with this as well. So what I'm going to do is create a graph, bar graph here that represents the same type of information. Maybe it's a listing of um, room names and their areas. So I'm going to go ahead and pass in my name field into the bar graphs axis. And then I'm going to then pass in my area field um, as the value field, which is now going to return a uh, visual that gives me access to um, the, the space name and its associated area. Now, what you'll notice um, out, of, out of the box here is that as I click through this information, um, it's not actually affecting any of this visual information over here. And then as I click over here, um, you'll see that we're um, able to impact this visual, but it's not going the other direction. And that's because we need to insert one other field um, that's really important in the power and the tracer visual. And that's what we're calling summarized geometry. And this is a bit of a workaround, but it, it, it's, it's very reliable. Um, essentially what we need to do is summarize um, our geometry such that it can be linked to um, this information. So what I mean by that is we're going to basically take our element location and bring this down here. And then we're going to um, expand our summarized geometry. And we want to, um, by default, it's going to be don't summarize. We want to go to first. And what this is going to do is it's going to do some background sorting of our uh, information here, which will then allow us to have kind of more of an interactive um, setup. So if I click now through electrical, um, stair, um, it's, it's going to be, uh, in, in my bar chart, it's going to highlight the related spaces in my visual. So we now have this nice feedback occurring to where if I hit electrical, it's now going to highlight all of the electrical components, uh, electrical rooms in this building. Um, same with instruction um, and so on. Um, so really powerful way to interact with this um, information. Um, so as I as I work through this visual now, um, we we have a dashboard that is giving us the display of the room information. Um, it's giving us some diagrammatic information um, in terms of the uh, bar chart visual about the room, and we're also getting to a filter. So we now have something that is approaching a, a dashboard report that is conveying uh, this this type of information, and would allow us to, in the context of say a meeting or, or other context, allow us to dynamically parse the information in a way that is probably much more straightforward than going through Revit. Um, what I also might you know might do here just as a, as a way to demonstrate is bring in a slicer for level um, because we have these organized by level it might be interesting to start to slice the data by level as well so I have a slicer activated I'm going to go ahead and pull in the level uh, um, colon one which gives me the level names 
And what this is going to allow me to do is say, okay, well, maybe I just want to isolate the entry level here. And that's going to allow me to um, parse the visuals. It's going to update all of my area information. And it's going to um, allow me to um, interact with this visual um, in a standalone capacity like so. So here we, here we have um, the entry level selected, um, the floor level, um, and so on. So what we're what we're doing here is we're we're getting to uh, a point where we can you know really start to drill down on this information and understand it through the uses of sliders and adjacent visuals um, and so on, um, all using the tracer visual, which is rendering information right out of the fields contained in this um, exported database.